Hey and welcome to this week's 5 Minute Physio Tip. I'm David Pope from Clinical Edge. Today I'm going to be having a chat to you about cervicogenic headaches and how you can recognise these in your patients. So you're going to be having a number of types, patients with different types of headaches presenting to you and it's important to recognise which ones are the ones that are going to respond well to treatment and which ones aren't. Now there's three major types of headaches, your primary, secondary and tertiary headaches. Your primary headaches the major groups within that are your tension type headaches and your migraines. There's also a trigeminal autonomic headache, we'll see less of, but so you think about that tension type headache and migraines being the major ones within that primary headache group. That group makes up 80% of all headaches. That primary group doesn't include cervicogenic headaches. So the other 20% of all headaches 20% of headaches approximately are that secondary type of headache. And they're made up of a number of different things, including vascular disorders, trauma to the head and neck, and also cervicogenic headaches. So we've got to keep in mind that of all the headaches that people experience, cervicogenic headaches are in the smaller minority of headaches, and they're the ones that are going to respond to physio treatment or may respond to physio treatment. So, some of the indications in your patient's history that will help you to identify if it is a cervicogenic headache are that their, patient, their pain is unilateral. It doesn't side shift, so it doesn't swap around between left and right. It just stays on the one side. That it's associated with a neck movement or position. So it could be a sustained posture, it could be a sustained position, or it could be that they get it when they turn in a particular direction. So it's associated with that. It has to be associated with neck pain. So they must get the neck pain and the headache at the same time. So there's a temporal relationship between those. The other thing is that they're, they, they've got to, must have a res restriction in their range of movement. So if, you, if they've got right-sided headache associated with neck pain and also a restriction in their range of movement, then you're starting to get some more indicators that they may have a cervicogenic headache. As opposed to someone that's got full range of neck movement, they say, my headache's not really associated with being in a certain position or posture or uh, I don't get neck pain, you're not really looking at a cervicogenic headache. So that's, that's starting to give you some ideas and you can also then use your palpation as well. So uh, are they, uh, do they have pain in their cervical segments upon palpation? Does it reproduce their headache? So if you can fit all those things together, then you've got good support that you do have a cervicogenic headache and you can go ahead and treat it as such. And there's good evidence that it responds really well to, uh, to manual therapy and also retraining. So they often have a weakness in their deep neck flexors and other things in the studies that have been performed on this population. So you can uh, incorporate the retraining. They also have overactivity of SCM in the studies. So you can look to identify, do they have that? Do they have a weakness? or can you improve their headache or their neck range of movement, in particular their neck range and pain, with your mobilisation. So they're your indicators for cervicogenic headaches. If they're talking about other things like they get vomiting, nausea, photophobia, uh, auras, they have a pounding type headache, you're thinking more along the lines of either migraine or uh, migraine or tension type headache. So we can go into more differentiating tension type headaches and migraines, but for now it's just important to identify within the scope of this video, which ones are your cervicogenic headaches and which ones are not, so that you know which ones are gonna to respond to it. So I hope that gives you some ideas about identifying them and getting some ideas for treatment. So I hope you enjoyed this week's five minute physio tip. I look forward to catching you all on another episode.